how to achieve a cinematic look with tight budget. Nick Reffen is giving us the answer in his super stylish feature film, The Neon Demon. And we are going to break it down and understand what techniques in terms of lighting, color and composition are being used. Let's go! What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin and you're watching No Limits On channel. The Neon Demon is a relatively low-budget art house movie by Nicholas Winding Refn. Considering the budget of $7 million, which is not a lot for a Hollywood feature film, and very tight schedule, we'll have a look at how they managed to achieve a very cool looking image with certain vibe to it so we can understand what makes it look so cinematic. I hate this word, but this movie is definitely cinematic. But first, let's have a look at camera and lenses of choice. Nick Refn and the DP, her name is Natasha Breyer, chose Arri Alexa XT+, and also Cook Xtel Express anamorphic lenses with 2x squeeze ratio, so the final movie has 2.39 to 1 aspect ratio and very pronounced anamorphic look. Look at those shots of Night City, for instance. Spoiler alert, guys! If you didn't see this movie yet, I highly suggest watching it first and then coming back to my video. Thank you. A few words about the plot. Jesse, who's played by Elle Fanning, is coming to LA as a young and shy girl and becomes a model. Her new friend, Ruby, played by Jenna Malone, is helping her out, but the modeling world is cruel and it's not that simple. The whole movie is about narcissism and beauty. Keep this in mind, guys. So now let's dive deep into breaking down the shots. So the opening shot. Here we see Elle Fanning and she's covered with blood. And let's have a look at the colors used in this scene. We see a strong red color of the blood, a very saturated blue color and also kind of greenish color of the couch itself. And if we connect with the lines on a color wheel all of those colors, we can see a classic triangular scheme. Those colors match perfectly and as you can see, the image itself is very pleasing to the eye. And also we can see that the colors in the shot are kinda repeating itself. So the purple on the floor and purple on her makeup. And also the blue dress and the blue light in the corner of the shot. This shot is made on rails and we're moving backwards and we can see that this shot has a practical lighting. So the lights itself are in the shot. Also, I think there is some kind of light above, as we can see right here. We have a little spill of light on the wall. Also, we have a huge neon, uh, you know, the neon demon, the neon sign behind her, and we can see a huge curvature of the anamorphic lens. It's a distortion. In the next shot, we understand that it was a photo shoot, and now we see the Jenna Malone's character, and she's looking in the mirror, and through another mirror we can see that she's looking at the main character, so it's a lot of mirrors, and the whole movie itself is full of mirrors. Once again repeating the theme of narcissism and beauty. And also I like how Jenna Malone's character is kind of in this square, dark square, pops out of the screen and it draws a lot of attention to it. And if we apply the golden ratio tool, we can see that her face is right in the main part of it, in the most you know, important part of the golden ratio. In the next shot we see a very strong contrast and silhouette of those two ladies in the elevator. Now let's have a look at the color wheel and we can see two main colors in this scene. The purple or magenta and cyan or kind of bluish greenish one. And those colors are also complementary and as you can see it looks really nice. Then if we apply a rule of thirds we can see that they are placed on the left third of the frame which is also very nicely looking and we have a lot of leading lines towards those characters that are drawing our attention. So here we can see once again the repeating of mirrors theme. It's a lot of mirrors in this movie and once again we see the purple and cyan color scheme. And of course, the main character is placed on both thirds. On the left one, we can see her back and on the right one, we can see her face. So we have a nice balance. In the next shot, we can see a model and she's a bitch to be honest. And she's jealous of Elle Fanning's character and she's looking at her through the mirror. And she's kind of distorted because she's very angry and she hates this little young girl. So once again, the mirrors, cyan and purple. And in this scene, we see a ton of blue colors and we see the main models, the professional models, uh, the bitches, let me say, and they are very angry and they have a lot of pathos and they're just, you know, I don't like them. And we see a tiny bit of purple kind of shaping the face of the model on the left. 
And this blue color is strongly associated with something bad and evil, no matter that they are smiling and they're pretty, you know, beautiful, but trust me, they're pretty angry. And in the next shot, we see the beginning of a ton of shots with central composition. We see Jenna Malone's character right in the middle of the shot, and we see a good symmetry. Look at those uh, mirrors, mirrors, once again, mirrors everywhere. And we still see the colors blue, cyan, and magenta. Yeah, by the way, Nick Reffin just loves using the rails, as you can see right here. Also, Nick Reffin loves a lot of dark and moody shots and very wide shots that are almost completely blacked out. And also, we can see really nice leading lines and the rule of thirds is telling us that its composition is almost perfect. And I think you understand everything about this shot by yourself. Central composition, only the red color, looks awesome. So now we'll have a look at some daylight shots and as you can see we have a lot of artifacts of anamorphic lenses. The corners are pretty soft and as you can see we even have some fogginess in those. As Nick Raffin said, Natasha Breyer from time to time was wiping her forehead and covering with this, uh, you know, sweat the lenses a little bit so they achieved this softer look. And imperfections are actually looking really great in this shot. In the next shot we see the golden ratio rule once again and I also really like how this building looks. Look at those uh, shapes of the wall, those holes. And as you can see Nick Raffin is sitting right here and checking the framing with his super duper thing. Basically it's a viewfinder. And one more important thing that El Fanning is coming from the right and she's going to the left and we see a lot of empty space um, up front so she's coming into the new world new life new modeling business let me say first of all if we apply the rule of thirds we can see that the characters are really separated and they are far from each other so the lady at the left she's a shark in this business and Elle Fanning is just a new really young girl with nice face but nothing else and now let's have a look at the colors I just love this color scheme look at this First of all, we have this deep red, kind of a raspberry color of her suit, really nice one. And also we can see some pillows of dark and deep red color as well. The color of the couch is so cool, it's a deep yellow, you know, kind of mustard color. And also we have those little pillows, kind of dark green. And I really enjoy the combination of those colors. In the next shot we see the downtown LA behind her and also we can see some light coming from the left side and a little bit of bounce or fill light from the right as well. And the central composition of course. So now we're in the motel where she lives because she's not local of course and once again we see a huge mirror and she's going to sign up a contract. And the director is showing this to us through a mirror with a slow push in on a dolly which is also really nicely illustrates the idea of the film that everything is shot through the mirrors and it's kind of fake and it's all about narcissism as well. And looking at the colors in this shot, there are two prime colors. The red on the curtains and the green on the walls. And they're also making this look nice. And of course her purple dress is also looking amazing right here. So we see that she signs up the contract and also we see a little bit of kicker light on her arm. Probably it's uh, out of the window or maybe it's a different special light that they put here. So here we see Dean who's a kind of a friend of our main character and look at this shot. I really enjoy how it looks. First of all we see the pastel colors kind of reddish or orangish color right here on the sky. It's a sunset. Also a very deep green color and nicely looking shirt. A bit of brighter orange and red in this building. And this lighting scheme is well known as a Rembrandt lighting when we have a little triangle under his eye. Overall, I really enjoyed this shot. But here comes even more beautiful shot. <laughs> I just love how it's looking right here. We see a lot of leading lights as you can see and the colors are just amazing. We can see some deep orangey color of the sunset, a really bright red from the neon sign. Once again, neon demon, neon signs and a little bit of dark green on the trees and his shirt. And we can see kind of a triangle once again and those colors are located at one half of the image circle, I mean the color wheel, thus having a very nice complementary feeling to those. And in the next shot we can see El Fanning's character coming up and custom designers are knowing what they're doing. Look at the colors of their shirt and the dress. It's magenta or purple and deep green 
And if we pick those colors on the color wheel, we can see that they're exactly opposite, thus complementing in a really nice fashion. And one more shot with very low exposure, guys, but I like the central composition and those little oval bokehs from the anamorphic glass right here, just um, a bit of silhouette of the main character, great job. Once again, we see the red neon color, which is nice, and it's complementing the cyan color of the street. Once again, red and cyan is a pretty nice combination, and you see it a lot in such movies as Drive, some synth wave, uh, you know, late 80s movies, a lot of neon signs and all that. Red and cyan are just perfect. And they are inside of the car. Once again, we see the red neon sign and a lot of cyan and kind of cool and bluish colors which is looking very cool. Now we're moving on into the photo studio, which is a real, by the way, studio in Los Angeles. And here we can see the photographer. And I like the composition right here. He's not just standing in front of white backgrounds and, um, you know, placed on the right third of the frame, but also we can see the camera right in the corner of the shot, thus giving good balance to the picture. And in this shot, we see Elle Fanning standing right in the middle of the shot, and the photographer is right here, also really nicely balancing the empty white background. And one more interesting shot, we see the photographer, the rule of thirds, uh, right at his eye, we see the cross of those lines, which is great, but also at the lower right third, we can see the Jenna Malone's character, and she's watching in the, uh, you know, out of focus area, she's watching Elle Fanning's character, and we understand that it's not that simple about their relationship. Greatly balanced shot once again. And that's what I'm talking about when I say Nick Refn loves dark and moody and wide shots. The photographer comes in through a little door, we see only the silhouette, but it's so intense, love it. And here we have the golden scene, we have golden everything, golden hair, golden accessories, golden skin color, and even the golden necklace on the photographer's head, and his skin is also looking kind of golden. And also look at those oval bokehs, they're great. Now we're moving on to some cafe, and we see the glitter, the golden glitter in those couches, which is, <laughs> you know, Nick Reffin said that he was looking for those glittery couches all around Los Angeles, and this is a real cafe, by the way. And also we see a very nice color of Jenna Malone's character shirt or sweater, the deep green kind of olive color, and also the leading lines through the window blinds, and we see the Rembrandt lighting right here under her eye. And this is shot from the darker side of the face, thus giving us more shape. It's a very popular Hollywood technique to shoot from the darker part of the face. And now we switch angles and we see those bitches in the shot and they have the same lighting technique, the same Rembrandt lighting and the same, you know, glittery couches. All in all, it's looking really nice to my eye. It's very simple and I think we have minimal artificial lights and by the way, we see a little bit of neon signs in front of the building. So now we're moving on to casting scene. And as you can see, the director just puts every single girl into her own special position to get this composition of the shot. As well, we see a ton of leading lines on the ceiling, which is great. And we see the exact same picture with this shot, all the ladies at their places and the character is at the center with the leading lines on the ceiling as well. And we continue the marathon of very dark and moody shots with central composition and we see the character of Jenna Malone coming into a building. And as well we can see some anamorphic flares from the sun I guess. And we see that it's a cemetery, the Los Angeles, and once again a ton of leading lines and central composition which is looking just great. The next shot is pretty much simple, but I love how it's done. The character is at the right side of the image, almost in the corner. We see a leading line towards her eye and also she's kind of half-faced. She's almost a two-faced person. So it's the beginning of her transformation after the casting. And the skin tone is really well complemented by this cyanish, uh, greenish, bluish color. And here comes my favorite actor, Keanu Reeves. I just love how he's acting. And in this shot, it's a very wide shot, we see a very nice contrast. First of all, the right part of the image is simply blacked out. We see a ton of leading lines that are leading towards him and a very cool separation in the dark background and he's lit by the sun. And of course, he's in the left third of the frame. 
And this is one of my favorite shots, to be honest. I love those colors. Just look at it, guys. First of all, we have a ton of cyan and it's really nicely complementing her skin tone. Also, we have this pinkish, reddish uh, little strap on the flowers, the flowers themselves, a lot of orange at the left part of the image, and overall, it's giving us a very nice little triangle of colors. It's a pity that this shot is only like two seconds long. The next shot is pretty much beautiful in my opinion and it really illustrates the fakeness and the unrealistic nature of modeling in this world. The narcissism and the mirrors are right here. We see that those characters are talking to each other through mirrors. We see only the profiles of those girls but we can see them in the mirrors and we see a very nice framing in those bright mirrors. But in the next shot they change places and we see that the character of Elle Fanning is ready to replace those top models with herself as a neon demon let me say. And also I find it really funny that the model on the left is looking like a character of Tom Hardy in Bronson. It's another movie by Nick Reffin and I do recommend you watching the Bronson movie as well. And look at this, <laughs> it's looking very funny. I guess it's an easter egg, I hope so. And here she comes, she's going to become a neon demon right here. We see that she's on the left third of the frame and she has in front of her a ton of space and uh, you know the future is bright for her. And here is one of my favorite parts and this is the triangle. The triangle is a kind of a symbol of a female and women overall but it has a pretty nice reflection in the water forming kind of a diamond so it's telling us that she's a diamond, she's a demon, she's a new superstar. And this is almost a completely silhouette shot. And here we can see the backstage that it's not as deep of a you know space and we have a ton of different things that are not related to the shot and they simply masked it out a lot. And also we can see that this shot is shot in 60 fps but the whole movie of course itself is shot in 24p and overall we can see some reflections and uh, that she's kissing herself we see the blue color is changing to red so she's kind of transforming in this scene. And we see the good old Dolly right here as the main tool of Nick Raffin. And here she comes. Look at her look. She's so different. The eyes are different. We see some red at her hair. We see the golden uh, color all around the shot and also some greenish, uh, you know, curtains. And all in all, this looks kind of evil, to be honest. But the color scheme is just so, so nice. Look at that triangle. And here comes the shot with Keanu Reeves and I like how moody it is. It's so dark, we can almost see nothing and I like the color scheme as well. A little bit of red and some green colors. So clean, so impressive. And this is a classic silhouette shot with some patterns as leaves on the wallpaper. Also looks so clean, so minimal, I love it. So now we see that the relationship between Jenna Malone and Elle Fanning are kind of changing and they are starting to maybe even hate each other because Jenna is trying to seduce Elle and she rejects her. By the way, this is a real mansion. They shot it in a real mansion in Beverly Hills, if I'm not mistaken. But look at those colors once again. The color of Jenna Malone's hair, the color of the dress, deep, deep red color. Also the color of the sheets on the bed, pinkish, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of magenta. And also the wool colors, also close to cyan, kind of deep cyan color. And all in all, it gives us a ton of room of a colorful playground. And in the next shot, we see that Elle Fanning is caressing herself. She's just enjoying how beautiful she is. And she's just a super model, super bright, super demon, whatever. She's just beautiful. And that's the way this shot looks. And we have here basically two colors, the deep red color and a very dark green color, which are also complementary colors. And also we can see a great silhouette of her face and her profile. In the next shot, in the golden room, we see that her character is kind of having a little bit of glitter under her eye. She's uh, dressed like, um, I don't know, little Cinderella probably. And it's a full golden room. It was painted in gold, uh, you know, on purpose. And look at all of those colors. They're really complementary colors. And I love how it's looking right here. 
In the next shot we see Los Angeles at the back and everything is bluish and dark. We see the central composition, so it's a, basically a climax of the film. Also we see that the pool is empty and this dark and bluish and moody color is telling us that something is going to happen. And in the next shot we understand that the bitches, the models that uh, have been replaced by her, they are coming at her. And they will kill her, basically. And in this shot I love the framing, that she's kind of uh, inside of this black frame. And also we see a traditional knife shot <laughs> in the young hands of Elle Fanning. Then the blue color instantly changes to red, completely red color, which is uh, representing blood, of course, and they are running after Elle Fanning's character. And also the framing is really nice, the golden ratio is here, guys. And finally we see Jenna Malone's character and uh, some background lights from Los Angeles, but she's so blue and it shows her mood basically, she is blue. And uh, also she is so cold and violent and she has no emotions and she just wants to eliminate Elle Fanning's character. And as we can see, she really pushed Elle Fanning into the pool and Elle Fanning is dead. And we see a lot of blue and greenish colors to say that it's a cold blood murder and they had no emotions, just did it and enjoyed it basically. And in the next shot we can see Jenna Malone's character is taking a bath in her blood, I mean in Elle Fanning's blood basically, in her character's blood of course and that she shows absolutely no emotions. The red blood and the blue color of the scene overall are also complementing each other, of course. And then we see that the bitches, the models, they eat Elle Fanning's character. They are eating her beauty, they are eating her success, they are eating her um, natural, outstanding look. So they are just eating her. Great color, great composition, <laughs> leading lights, you know, guys, but, you know, it's an art house movie, don't forget about it. And to conclude this art housey, um, you know, outstanding performance, let me say the gentleman's character is laying topless in the grave. And we see it a little bit of, uh, you know, fog on the lenses, kind of dazzling on the lenses up above right here. And the composition is great, the colors are just awesome. After it we see a little scene with Jenna Malone's character being naked in front of the moonlight, a really nice silhouette shot, I like it. I won't spoil it what she's doing, but uh, it's not really <laughs> nice to look at to be honest, so once again it's an art house movie guys. And finally we can see that the model who ate Elle Fanning's character, she's having a photo shoot, she's being more successful, of course, she just ate the most beautiful girl and the most successful girl in the industry. But it's not that simple, watch the movie to know how it ends. And also we see the second bitch and, and uh, we see a lot of reflections uh, in the shots in the uh, door and also in the mirrors at the left, the central composition. And the last shot for today that I want to discuss is this um, pool photo shoot. And I like how palms are the thirds of the shot and also the pool is dividing the shot by two halves as you can see right here. And also the leading lines from the pool are very pronounced and overall it looks really nice and I like the red color of the uh, skirts and of course the red color represents blood and later on the model will do something bad to her related to the blood and to this color. So guys, we're done with the shots breakdown. Please tell me in the comments how do you like this format and shall I continue to make such analysis of feature films and which movies can you suggest for it? If you did enjoy this video guys, please smash the like and subscribe buttons as I say in my videos and hit the notifications bell. My name is Alek Nikitin, no limits on channel. See you in the next video guys. Take care, bye.